What do you do when your parents fall from grace and become almost cartoon characters, but you still want to stay in the family business, which is faith? Well, first you rebel, you sow your wild oats, and then eventually you return, go back to work, start an online church for all those people who've given up on church. Where is Jay Baker? Hey, Jay. I think we spend so much time on theology and trying to figure out what our faith is all about, and I'm as guilty as anybody doing it, or, you know, does God exist or not? I mean, there are times where I wonder. I have a lot, you know, times where I doubt my faith. I think it's part of faith. But what I've realized is important is loving people where they're at. We have church in a bar. I'm not a street preacher. You can come in if you want. Sit down and have a drink. Not have a drink, whatever. People say, oh, why aren't you worried that, what if an alcoholic comes in there? I'm like, well, I know if an alcoholic comes every Sunday. A recovering alcoholic at that. And it's me. I've been through it. I've seen horrible things of religion. I've seen what religion does. I've, I've, I mean, my parents, everybody wanted to sit on my parents' couch to be on their Christian television. And a lot of people thought they were a joke before they fell. But all these other Christians and all these other people, it didn't matter. Oh, I just want to be on the couch and have my five minutes and promote my stuff. And it's all about God's love and God's grace and all that stuff. But when my parents lost everything, everybody disappeared. So that was kind of a wake-up call. You know, I went to Christian school. Anybody who's been through that knows it's pretty strict. My passion is, is loving people. My passion is, is to see a, a peaceful reformation, especially in the Christian church, where people are, we are learning to respect other people's faiths, where we're reaching out to the gay community and loving them and accepting them and standing up for their equal rights as much as anyone else's where we're able to look into the text and realize that it's not all perfect. Sometimes the Greek and the Hebrew doesn't explain it. Sometimes we need to look deeper and look at the historical background of things. But the fact is, in the end, it's, it, to me, that's not what Christ was about. Before Christ was crucified, he told his, his 12 disciples, he goes, I want you guys to love each other. I want to give you a new commandment. I want you to love each other, which is not really anything new about that if you think about it. But he goes, no, 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 seriously, I really want you to love each other. I want you to love each other like I love you, and it will prove to the world that you belong to me. We haven't done so good at that. The Christian faith is probably, it's supposed to be about forgiveness and grace and hope, but it seems to be about the opposites. And that's heavy for me. That hurts me because when I, my faith is very important to me. It's very personal to me. And I hate to see it destroyed by, by zealots. I mean, it's hard enough to say, well, I'm going to go debate an atheist or I'm going to go debate this person or that person. It's like, we don't even have the time. We're so busy fighting each other. And it's ridiculous. And I see that. But I feel that the solution is, is through tolerance. I think that Christ was killed because he was tolerant because he was too tolerant of people that other people didn't like. But Jesus wasn't worried about his reputation of who he was seen with and who he hung out with. That's what attracts me. What attracts me is that it was pure forgiveness, not based on any level I reach, any level I can reach. It was just it's finished, it's done, it's taken care of. Maybe it's a lazy man's religion. Maybe it's just good news. But that's what it became to me. It didn't become about do's and don'ts. I felt like growing up, until I started to really read the Bible, it was all about do this and don't do that. And it was, I'm like, why do you even call this crap good news? I literally thought God made a mistake, and that mistake was Jay Baker. And then I realized that most of the people I was listening to were just practicing religious traditions and ideas, and mostly American traditions and American ideas and that I was missing the essence of my faith. And through going to a bunch of bookstores and buying commentaries and getting on things and, and, and un trying to understand Greek and trying to understand Hebrew, but through that I found something so beautiful and it's just great. My wife's in Africa, South Africa right now. 
She just, she just said, I got to go to Africa. I was like, okay. You know, not a normal thing, okay? This isn't like something like, oh, yeah, we're just really do a lot of stuff. She didn't go down with any group or anything like that. She just got a plane ticket and went to South Africa. And she's working with these little girls who are dying of AIDS, 12, 13, 14. And she tells me these stories that makes everything that we debate about and argue seem so pointless. She told me this story, how they got a food processor donated, I think it was a parish or something, and, and they saw her and they said, we have this food processor donated and we don't know how to put it together, so you put it together. If you knew my wife, she doesn't know how to do that. But because she was American, for some reason, she knew how to put together a food processor because we're all hungry um, and obese. Okay, <laughs> there I said it. But so she makes applesauce. And for the first time, this little 13, 12, 13-year-old girl has applesauce for the first time in her life, which is really apple mush is what Amanda was saying. And the little girl goes, this is so divine. Now, why is that important to me? My mom's 60 pounds and stage four cancer. There's not a moment I don't think about that. I've got friends who are going through crisis. I've got myself going through crisis because I'm a gay affirming pastor. I've had almost you know, all these articles, bad articles written about me, churches trying to cut me off, call me a heretic, whatever. But in those moments where I hear, oh, how divine, everything ceases to exist and puts things into perspective. And when you're able to grasp a small bit of perspective of human suffering, and then you're able to say, man, what's happening in Darfur? And how many little girls are there going through this kind of thing? How many little boys are going through this thing? How many adults and how many wives are going through this thing? You know, and you think about the AIDS crisis and how as Christians a lot of times we're like, oh, we can't give condoms, we can't do, you know, I'm like, are you kidding me? You don't think Christ was practical? You don't think God gave us minds and brains and, 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 to use, to develop? I don't have any eloquent speeches for you. I'm just a guy who thought, gee, church seems really unfriendly to me. My parents have been through a lot, but I really believe in this Jesus guy, so maybe I'll find out if a bar will let me meet there once a week and people who want to come can come. You know, that's it. I just want to love people. I just want to experience people. That's the idea for me, is my idea, is to challenge you, is just get out of your comfort zone and love each other. Love your enemies. Do good to them. You say, oh, that sounds foolish, but it's actually pretty neat because then you get this thing called dialogue. And as humans, we need to dialogue. We need to talk because we grow from dialogue. But if we sit and we don't talk to each other, it doesn't make any sense. If we sit and go, oh, no, no, that's wrong. God doesn't approve. I don't want anything to do with that, or I don't believe in that, so I don't want anything to do with it. That's evil and that's bad. We don't grow. We don't become tolerant. We don't learn how to to even test our faith, test our beliefs, or our lack thereof. It's common sense. Love God with all your heart and your neighbor as yourself. You say, well, Jay, I don't have a heart. I have a hard time believing in God. Well, love people. Because I've seen God in everybody. In my friend who is a, a Satanist, whose mom died in a car accident and died in her lungs. Her lungs got clogged with dirt. And she drowned on her own fluid. And I saw him go through that. And did he come to Jesus and all that? Goes, no. Still Satanist. <laughs> But there are moments that we shared together where I saw God's fingerprint more than any of the churches I'd ever gone to or grown up in or books I read. I believe in what people like Martin Luther King Jr. did, and he's an inspiration. See, I don't think God just stopped calling people and apostles and things like that once the Bible was summed up and done. You know, and I don't believe they all fit into our perfect mold. God is so much bigger and so much greater than any of us will ever grasp or understand. 
So when I felt in my heart and my mind that I said, you know, I don't think it's a sin to be gay. I went and studied the scriptures, looked at it. I'm like, well, this one looks like it's talking about prostitution. This one looks like it's talking about worship to these other gods. You know, well, I don't get it. it doesn't, there's not enough for me to, you know, I prayed about it. I felt conviction in my heart. I felt like the Lord put something on my heart. And I said, you know what, I want to do this. And it was the strength of seeing that Christ suffered, the disciples suffered, other people in other religions have suffered for standing up for their convictions. I encourage you, grow, search, seek, but above all, love. Martin Luther King said, it's not the words of our enemies we'll remember, but the silence of our friends. Thank you. <laughs>